So here we have like a true system of equations. Uh, and there are a couple ways to solve this. I would not do this algebraically though, okay? Well, there, you can set the two equations equal to each other, right? They're both set equal to y. So it's not so bad to be like, okay, negative one ninth x is equal to one half x and then solve for x. That's what they want from us. So we could do that, but we gotta deal with the fractions and the negative and so like, it just makes me nervous. So the, here's the way I would do it. They give us four values of x. It's not like we have to do algebra to find out of the infinite values of numbers in the universe, the right exact number. There's only four possibilities here. Let's just test them out. And if you're gonna guess and check, my advice is just pick the laziest thing at first. If it's right, then you get it right quickly. There's no reason to start with A here. Just start with C, right? This, is, this would be my first guess because zero is so easy. All we do is take that and put that into each equation for the X. And if we get the same Y value for both, then we know we're in good shape. So the first equation, right, would be Y is equal to negative one ninth times zero. Okay, well, zero times anything is zero. So that looks good. And then if we do the same thing for the other equation, Y is equal to one half times zero. Well, anything times zero is zero. So this is the answer because the, the coordinate is the same. Zero, zero is basically the point that, produce, that is the solution for this system. It's, it's a point that lies on both lines that, that where both equations intersect. Um, that's it. I'd be done with this question. I wouldn't need to check any other choice because I've proven this one correct. Uh, if you wanted to, though, um, in general, with kind of systems of equations like this where the algebra is, is maybe one of the only ways to go or maybe sometimes the answer choices won't be as convenient as these ones and we might not want to guess and check because the numbers are too messy, we can always use Desmos. Now, normally when I showed you know, equations to you guys in Desmos, I um, put them in prior to the video, but I didn't do that here because I want to show you why maybe Desmos might not be great for this one. It is tedious to input them, right? So we got to be really careful too. So y is equal to negative one ninth, and then we got to tap out there. And so on my tablet, it's kind of annoying, but there it is, negative one ninth x. So that's one equation. And then we do the other, y is equal to one half, tap out, x, right? We don't want to put that x on the bottom of the, the fraction. And we see we have a, a, a blue line and a green line here, and our, our point of intersection for these will always be like um, uh, highlightable. It'll be, it'll be a clear point where we can tap it and see the coordinates. So that's why for systems of equations, we don't really need to use algebra because the calculator will solve pretty much every situation for us just by inputting it and then we can visually see the solution, which is the point of intersection. So you can see right here, we've got proof of what we already knew. Zero, zero is where these two lines intersect. So if that just makes you more comfortable and confident in these kinds of questions, by all means, um, use Desmos for that. Uh, but I think a lot of times on systems of equations, we end up with this ability to plug points into equations, to guess and check, um, because basically uh, the numbers are easy. So just kind of find whatever works best for you, but I would say the last resort is algebra because it tends, it tends to be where we make the most mistakes. So either let the numbers do the work for you or let the calculator do the work for you, and hopefully uh, that will just be about entering things correctly and the rest will be really easy.